Hey kids, welcome to Making Stuff with Mr. Hoon. It's going to be back with you. You know, this is going to be great. Now I know I usually say something like that, but it really is. We're making stuff together again. We're finally starting to get into the groove. Uh, several students have come to our curbside pickup days and picked up supplies. Uh, if you haven't been able to, please reach out to me. I still have several uh, drawing boards, you know, drawing tools, uh, painting supplies, bags of paints that just haven't been picked up. For my painting class, that uh, really matters because you can't paint without paint. And also, we started a mixed media piece on text that we put on uh, watercolor paper, and that is effectively going to be your final painting of the year. And that's something we do. you do on your own on the side. You might incorporate some of these lessons that we're going to be doing. One of the reasons I love this lesson so much is it marries drawing and painting first, initially, at the beginning. And it shows us how drawing and painting are related as two-dimensional media. But then it starts to diverge it starts to separate and become as unique as a drawing class or a painting class. So we'll begin together, both my drawing class and my painting class, will be receiving similar information. And then as we move forward, it'll start to separate, where drawing will receive drawing techniques and painting will receive painting techniques. Today, I'll be sharing with you some pattern work and some design that I'd like for you to experiment with. Now, does that mean that you have to use my designs or the designs I'm providing? The answer is no. What you have to do is show participation. So I'll have very clear learning targets for you. For both drawing and painting, I'll just tell you right now. Learning target number one, and I'll be able to see this if you photograph your practice and you upload it to the assignment page on Google Classroom. That's right. We're working both in Google Classroom and using YouTube videos because it's on my Google Classroom that you see the information that I'd like you to explore. Now, as we begin, you don't have to answer any more questions in written form or verbally. We're just going to start with information that you can look at on your own time. It'll be on the assignment page on Google Classroom, and it'll be listed as design beginning. That's right, design beginning. Now, keep this in mind. There's just a few learning targets, and if you'll remember working with Mr. Hoon in our shared studio when we were physically in school together, you'll know that learning targets are a great way for us to think about assessment, how we're checking our understanding as we go. So when I give a learning target, it's an I can statement. And here's what I mean. It's a true or false statement. You can either do this or you can't. And if you can't, you're going to be reaching out to me and I'm going to be giving you feedback. And we're going to be discussing modifications and ways for you to succeed. But let's start at a learning target. Number one, our first learning target is on a piece of paper in my sketchbook, I can create a design with pattern. That's right. A design with pattern. Now, in this project, we're going to be sharing between drawing and painting class some similar elements of art. And one is line. Now, there's a term in the art world called linearity or linearity. And that just involves design with a lot of line work. So you can see why that applies to drawing. But it also applies to painting. Because let's face it, in the construction world, you start with a blueprint. In ceramics, we often sketch before we make to get our ideas out on paper, to think from our brain, from this accumulation of ideas and processes and synapses and neurons onto a flat surface so we can have that relationship between thought and process. So we'll start with our design as a drawing, and then we'll start moving in, in drawing class in colored pencil techniques and in painting class in watercolor and acrylic. Uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great, peeps. So I'm going to cut this right now 
and we're going to switch camera lenses. We're going to move over to a book that I found several years ago, uh, and I find it incredibly helpful. So, thanks for sticking with making with stuff with Mr. Hoon, drawing one, and painting one. All right. All right, people of all ages and stripes, I'd like to share with you this book called Designa, Technical Secrets of the Traditional Visual Arts. Tradition. It's a very human thing. Uh, it involves culture. And again, I'm going to revisit this idea that what we see and how we see it is always influenced by time, place, and culture. So, the world over, we are going to find different designs. But one thing I think you'll find is, um, in various cultures, you see more pattern than you do see representational design. Let me finish. Let me explain. If we go through this book and we look uh, and we start, you'll see that there's primordial symbols that start with very simplistic designs. You're going to find these on petroglyphs, rock carvings, um, in caves, on, on, you know, in the desert, in the wilderness, um, in archaeological digs, all over the world in ancient human uh, kind and habitations in places where they lived. You know, as we move forward um, in time, uh, you're going to see culturally specific geometric pattern. Uh, you're going to see Greco-Roman, or in this case, uh, Celtic. If I, I'm just going to move through the, here. Oh, look at this. Islamic mathematical pattern, because we know that uh, uh, in Jewish tradition and in Islamic tradition, one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not uh, have a graven image other than me, something to that effect, is, uh, is really interpreted as, um, if God made it, um, how can you possibly represent it any better than God? So, drawing something as it appears representationally is just not acceptable. Uh, so, drawing a person, hey, listen, God made the person. You can't improve on that. So, any graven image, um, any, any symbolism that shows the representational natural aspect of God is not acceptable in those in those very uh, strict interpretations of that, those religious faiths. Uh, so, geometric mathematical pattern uh, was embraced early on, and you will find that in Islamic and Hebrew traditions. Let's just move through here. Pattern tile work. Mathematics and geometry. Look at this undulating, spiraling effect. You see this in nature. It, uh, it is very plant-like. Uh, this is a representation of the tree of life. Um, so, if, if I move through this, now look at this right here. This is a representation of a gazelle. Okay? This is a specific art form that is very Eurocentric. This idea that we can capture the essence of how something appears and make it look like it is in reality is actually a rare thing throughout human history. I mean, you're going to find more geometric pattern than you are Renaissance or Greco-Roman representations of the human form. You're going to see more symbolic representations of the human form than you are, like this, than you are going to see actual representational aspects of the human form. And so that's really the essence of what I want to get across to you. The word designer, all right, is just a fancification, if you will, of the word design. Now, what do you think of when you think of the word design? Well, I certainly think of control. I think of composition, and that is the arrangement of the elements of art in a, a picture plane. I think of it as the arrangement of parts into a new whole. When we design, we very systematically and consciously arrange elements of art like line, color, and its three dimensions, hue, intensity, and value. 
We arrange them in space. We arrange them with pattern, repetition, and rhythm. It is a thoughtful placement of the parts, that is the elements of art, into a picture plane, a design in the case of visual arts. So what I'm going to be doing for you in this initial part with our learning targets, I'm asking you to create a design that has pattern. Now you might say to yourself, well, Mr. Hoon, I, man, what are you talking about? I love to draw like landscapes or I love to paint uh, landscapes or Mr. Hoon, well, I, what are you talking about, man? I, you know, I love doing characters, man, and my manga is the best. My kung fu is better than your kung fu. No, you're not getting the point. I'm asking you, if you're one of those people like me who loves to draw characters and representational drawings, I'm not asking you to abandon that. I'm asking you to incorporate pattern. I'm asking you to incorporate texture. I'm asking you to think a little bit mathematically with in terms of rep uh, repetition. So you don't need to abandon what you love to do. If you love to draw R2-D2 all day, that's fine. If you're big into dinosaurs, that's fine with me. If you love drawing manga, great. What I'm asking you to do is to try something different. Far be it for me, your teacher, to ask you to try something challenging. Yes, I'm asking you to incorporate design and the placement of pattern into your composition. And how you do that, kids, in my drawing and painting classes is really up to you. My learning targets should be clear. They're very straightforward. So you're going to find the learning targets on the assignments page, right? And you can go to that in Google Classroom. If you haven't signed up, please reach out to me and I'll be happy to do that for you. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my own design, um, much like I did in my sketchbook here, where I was thinking to myself, I was thinking to myself, you know, one of the things that I find fascinating is the idea of turning simple shapes into symbols. Yeah, that's right. The arrow, this downward facing arrow, is not just a downward facing arrow. It might be read as something. When you think about symbols, like this first page of Designer, throughout history, simple line work and pattern ultimately evolved into um, hieroglyphs, the written alphabet in Canaanite, Sumerian cuneiform, the historical languages ultimately evolved into the language we use today. And writing evolved out of understanding of pictures as sounds, as a way to transmit what's in your brain so that onto a surface, a read readable surface, so that the future can read what you were thinking. Writing is very much an extension of the visual arts. So why is it so strange to think that a downward facing arrow used using color theory like cool to warm might be more than just a down downward facing arrow. It might in fact be a metaphor for something else. Now, we'll talk about that further as we move along. In drawing, we'll be using mineral spirits to smooth out the color pencil. We'll be talking about color theory. In painting, we'll be using watercolor and acrylic techniques uh, in very much the same way. Now, do I expect you all to do the same image? Again, I want to reiterate, no, I don't expect that. I want to see your own specific photography of your practice work. So if your design ends up looking like that, great. If your design ends up looking like that with pattern around it, great. What I want to see is you trying, you experiencing. After all, the visual art class 
is about experiential learning learning from experience. So I'm just grading on participation. I'm going to take several of these and scan them. Um, there are often step-by-step -step guides into creating pattern. Once we get our design down in our sketchbook and you photographed it for me and uploaded it so you can get that 40 points of participation uh, by trying to meet those learning targets, then we're going to move forward with very specific ways to color, if you will, uh, or paint or draw with colored pencil your design work. So this is Mr. Hoon with Making Stuff with Mr. Hoon. Uh, please look at Google Classroom. Oh, and a reminder, tomorrow is the 17th of April. It will be the last day that I physically go into our school, um, collect stuff, uh, organize it out on tables in the outside for people to come by between 9 a.m. and 11 o'clock and pick up supplies. So, making stuff with Mr. Hoon, design, we are signing out and off.